What's up, people? It's Nature Girl 30 here, and this is not going to be a discussion video. This is a video about my fantasy matches that I would love to see for No Way Out. Now, let's face it. No Way Out sucks. It's going to suck, and it's going to forever suck because the fact that they did not build it up really well. Even though Raw was a great Raw, and they did a really good job in promoting No Way Out, I really don't think there's enough matches on the card or enough matches you would actually care about for this No Way Out. So I really don't think that the pay-per-view pay-per-view buys is going to be high enough for it to count so there have been three matches that is in my mind that i think that it will probably be somewhat good somewhat decent as a fill i mean not necessarily as a filler but it will be well it will be a filler but it'll be entertaining filler and not only that it'll be great for the uh, for the actual mid cards that haven't been showcased as of late or really had crappy premieres but anyway going to the first match that i would love to see and I would prefer to actually see this on the card. Ryback versus Mason Ryan in a first blood match. Now, Ryback has been, his, his debut, in my opinion, has sucked. Now, everyone's going to say, oh, he's awesome, he's wonderful, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But let's face it, this man has really pumped a lot of promotion into this guy. He is trying to push him as hard as he can possibly push him and practically force him down our throats. Now, he's been in squash match after squash match after squash match after squash match after squash match and squash matches with two people. Yeah, what is that doing for him? Really nothing. And it's not really promoting any power or any kind of strength that he has. It's just showing that he's squashing people smaller than him. Anybody can do that. Well, except for me, so I'm not even going to go there. But anyway, the thing about it is that, yeah, we've seen a lot of backstage scenes about Ryback, but he really needs to start facing somebody that has the same strength. Has it pretty much matches him overall, practically the same caliber, caliber, <laughs> caliber <laughs> of of fighting. What it, it ha a guy has to really match him in order for him to be taken seriously, in my opinion. Pretty much is what I'm trying to say, even though it's just like I froze. But I really do believe that Mason Ryan will be the best match for him. Poor man's Goldberg versus. Batista Jr. I mean, <laughs> it will be great. These guys are powerhouses. And let's face it, Ryback looks like he can eat your children and still have room for more. So what will be better than a first blood match? And actually, it will not it will really showcase the strength and the power of these guys and how far they can really go and how far they will really go to entertain the crowd. So I really do think that the first blood match between Mason Ryan and Ryback will be a great match to have on a No Way Out pay-per-view or some kind of other extreme pay-per-view gimmick whatever but going on to my second match that i really would like to actually see this one may possibly be a dark match or maybe probably the first match of, the first match of the night but since the championship belt it should be the first match starting off just to get it over with so this is for the u.s title now let's face it the u.s title has been considered a joke ever since santino morella has actually held it and he has done nothing to defend it because it's considered a joke so who would i think would be greater to actually take over that position that that um, that Tim Morella has as a champion, let me see. This is this is the match that I'm going to call the idiot versus the savant. Now I said savant, so you guys already pretty much know who I'm talking about. I am talking about Tim Morella versus Damian Sandow. Now it's 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 let's face it, you know, and I probably said it about a thousand times. I do not like Damien Sandow's gimmick. I do not like the way that he portrays that he's better than you before he told you, da, 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 I'm smarter than you. I have an IQ of, a three, of over 300. And also, I know every word in the English dictionary as well as the SAT dictionary. Now, <sighs> Triple H has done that. So that's the reason why I don't like it. Triple H has done it before at his, at his um, debut. So that's why I don't necessarily like it. But Damien Sandow is the type of heel that you will love to hate. And you really want that to be a champion. If your belt is floundering so bad to where nobody takes it seriously to, where, seriously to where nobody actually wants it, you want a heel that is that you hate so much or probably think is so corny with those pink shorts and the cartwheels that you would literally love to see somebody take that belt away from him. And I really do believe that Damien Sandow will be the best person to take this title because it's... It's his start. I mean, it's his starting time, and it actually will get him out there a lot more as a champion. So Tim Morella, him being in this match with Damian Sandow, will not only showcase his talents because let's face it, he is a great wrestler. This guy is a great wrestler, but he has been downgraded because he's comic relief. 
We have all seen him in the ring. We have all seen him fight. He can fight. He really can. And sure, he does the splits and all this other stuff, but the guy is very fluid. He has the he has the best in-ring chemistry. Well, not really in the world, but he has he has really great in-ring chemistry with anybody he fights with and with anybody that he's he's a tag team partner with. And he's a natural and he is a great fighter. And if he actually does have a match with Damian Sandow, I really do think that it will be great for both of them. Now, I'm not talking about a squash match. I mean a match that lasts at least more than three minutes. I really do believe that it will be great for Santino Morello because if people will actually take him seriously. And if he loses the belt, it will humble him a little bit to where he can build himself up again to be not only if he not only not go towards the U.S. title, but go towards the IC championship belt. He will it will build up his character character to where you will actually start liking him and to whether that he'll be a lot more put over by the crowd to where he'll be put towards a, a belt a little bit higher than the U.S. title, maybe the IC championship. I highly doubt that he is going to be the WWE champion anytime soon. But the IC Championship belt will be the best belt for him. And him actually losing the U.S. belt and building up to that point will be great. And not only that, Damian Sandow will be champion. And he's actually a, he'll be a credible heel champion in my eyes. So I really do think it will be great for the both of them. But moving on to the third match that I would love to see as possibly a filler. Yes, it's going to be a filler. But it will be an interesting filler. It will be a triple threat match. And I know it's not going to happen because they got rid of the belt a long time ago when they cool split it up. And you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Tamita, Beth Phoenix, and Layla for the women's championship title. The women's. Not that ridiculous, gaudy monstrosity of a belt they call the Divas Championship that you can't even freaking take seriously. Thanks, Vicky! But regards to that, <laughs> uh, I think that the women's title will definitely bring a lot more credibility to these ladies that will definitely showcase what skills they have in the ring. Tamina is awesome. For crying out loud, she's the daughter of Jimmy uh, of Jimmy Superfly Schnooker and Beth Phoenix, who happens to actually be a true glamazon in my eyes. And Layla, who was one half of Lay Pool, probably one of the best female tag teams ever in WWE history. Having these women in the ring, especially these women that are, too, uh, are way, way, way bigger than her and way, way, way stronger than Layla, will showcase Layla's talents, and what she stood for being a part of Lake Pool. And it would actually bring out Beth Phoenix more, as well as Tamina. And Tamina has been in the backstage reigns ever since they turned her, as, uh, turned her a face. I think they should bring her back as a heel, and I think that she should actually be the heel in this match. While Beth Phoenix, I loved her as a heel. She's better as a heel, and Layla will be the only face. It'll be two heels versus a face. And I really think that will be a great match to see. For the women's championship, because the women's championship in my eyes can be taken more seriously than that ridiculous Divas belt. So I would love to see these matches on No Way Out. What matches do you think should be on No Way Out, either this year, next year, whenever if they decide to keep it? I want to hear what you guys have to say. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Um, if you want to send a video response or retort to what I have to say, I am all for that. Because even though I know that these matches can never happen, they're my fantasy matches. These are matches that I have been thinking of that I, will, that I hope will happen someday. But it may or may not. But either or. This is Nature Girl 30 signing off. Peace out. See you later. And I'm going to have my No Way Out preview soon. Later.